Are you ready for another Intel processor? Are you sure? Well, today I'm talking about the Intel i7 9700K, which is a new processor. A couple leaks have come out, and I want to take today to talk about it. I made a previous video talking about the 8-core, 16-thread i9 9900K, which is also leaked, but we're going to take the day to talk about this i7 because everyone's been raising a lot of questions. How is it going to perform? Blah, blah, blah. I'll talk about that at the end. But right now, we'll start off with the specs. And I'll talk about my personal opinions on how I think it's going to perform and how I really think it's going to be the ideal gaming processor out there. And I'll explain a little bit more on that later on. But let's get into the specs because everyone's here for those specs. So a little website called Silicon Lottery that sells processors kind of accidentally posted the specifications when they thought it would be a good idea to have pre-orders kind of for the processors that aren't even out yet. So, we get to know a little bit about these processors, which is fun, and as you can tell, I'm a little excited because I like knowing cool stuff before it's kind of out. But, let's get into it. So, it's got eight cores and no hyper-threading, which raises the question, it's got eight cores, but no hyper-threading, this is the first i7 that's not had hyper-threading. I mean, yeah, I know. We'll see how that gets. Not actually that difficult to add, which does kind of make me curious. Um, so th let's talk about the core counts and, well, obviously the core counts, state cores, just talked about that. But let's talk about the speeds of these cores. 4.9 gigahertz on a single core, which compared that to 8700K, came in right around a uh, solid 4.7. Uh, we got 4.8 in dual core, which is still higher than the 8700K. We got 4.7 in quad core and uh, 4.6 in all core, all eight cores. So, you know, there's a lot of people that are going to ask the question, if you're not really that in-depth about how processors work, you're going to ask the question if the 8700K has six cores and 12 threads, and the, excuse me, uh, the 9700K has eight cores and eight threads, which is faster. And the answer would be the more cores, the 9700K. Why? Because it's got more cores, it's got more memory allotments, it doesn't have to share the memory with the threads. Long story short, it still is better performing and it will perform faster. Well, of course, it runs a little bit faster, but it will still perform faster and be better for gaming than the 8700K. So, cache, which is also another thing I want to make a point to talk about. It's got 12 megabytes of L3 cache. And you're going, hmm. Well, keep in mind that the 9900K comes in right around with 16 megabytes of L3 cache, and this 9700K comes in with 12 megabytes of cache, which means for sharing the resources between each one of those threads, it's got about one megabyte per thread. And now if you come over to the 8000 or 9700K, it's got a little bit more than one megabyte per thread. Actually, it's got 1.5 if I'm doing the math off the top of my head. Forgive me if I'm wrong there, but it's got 1.5 megabytes per core, which makes me raise a lot of questions of, I think it's actually going to be a better overclocker. I think it's going to do a little bit better on overclocking. I think it's going to be a little bit better in gaming, which I have to see, but I definitely think it will stack pretty dang close, and it will definitely outperform the 8700K without a doubt. So let's talk about that MSRP, because everyone wants to know how you can get their hands on one of these. So 350 bucks is MSRP. I'm assuming it's going to be a little pricey when it starts, so maybe around 370 bucks. It's obviously going to come right in where the 8700K did, but keep in mind this is a Coffee Lake refresh. This means that we're on 14 nanometers plus plus or Coffee Lake plus plus or whatever you want to put. It's, we got a lot of pluses in there. Intel, you need to kind of get your work in on that <laughs> for 7 nanometer because AMD's going to beat you to it, and I'm not denying that one. So, anyway, let's talk about why I think this is going to be the best gaming processor. Because I said that at the beginning, and I want to take today to talk about that, or the last little bit of today's video to talk about that. I said that, why? Because the 8-core, 16-thread, 9900K is going to be a little pricey, not only at $500, but it's really going to have a tough spot in the market of where we've seen the past of these CPUs for gaming. A lot of gamers are going to think, who we should get the top tier, it's going to run the best for gaming. And while, yes, with a little overclocking, you might actually get a really good processing. And I'm going to give you my honest opinion. I think the i7 fits in for the top tier gamer, and I think the i9 fits in the top tier kind of streamer for the desktop market or recording uh, for, you know, gaming. Obviously, if you're doing, like, workstation tasks, you go up a level to the i9 on the full grades or a Threadripper or something along those lines, an AMD's book, and then you can kind of stick with the kind of desktop options. And obviously, I think an i9 on a desktop platform is a really good idea, but it really does raise a couple questions on exactly where this does fit in. 
And the 9700K, for me, is just going to be one of those gaming chips that I think everyone's going to go to just solely for gaming. And that really raises the question, what happens to the 9600K? If there's an i5, we'll never know. Um, at least until we get the releases and stuff. But it really raises the question if the gamer is going to go with the i7 as a top tier gaming option, and the i5 is the mid-lower range gaming option, and then the streamer is going to go with the i9s, why aren't the streamers already going up a level? just really raises the question, you know, you've kind of split the market even more and you've kind of creeped into the, you brought the professional grade stuff kind of down here. Which obviously I think is not a bad idea, I like having the ability on a platform and we have AMD that's supposed to be coming out with 10 cores and 20 threads on the AM4 platform which I'm really stoked for, but it just really depends on what the, how well this performs. And I feel like the 8, or 9700K is going to be a great processor for gaming. I think it's going to be the top tier gaming option just because it's going to be really easy to overclock. Why? Because I think just having sole cores is going to be better when we get to the overclocking, just the voltage. Um, obviously, it's not going to have as much memory issues with hogging memory. The threads, the different threads, hogging memory because there are no threads. just eight threads, eight cores, you're good. And so, I really am interested to see how well it performs. I really think it will be better overclocking, and I think we'll really be able to see some cool stuff coming out of it. Now, as for what I'm going to say from AMD, though, I think that AMD is definitely starting to push Intel. I think everyone agrees. I, with, regardless of who you are loyal to, regardless of what you're fanboying over, we got to give credit to AMD and the fact that they're starting to push Intel. I mean, everybody loves everybody. I've had both Intel and AMD. And I just got to say, AMD with these Ryzen processors, keep pushing Intel to move forward, which I'm really happy about because we're finally starting to see some innovation. So keep pushing. Good job, AMD. Keep pushing Intel because even if we don't buy anything from AMD, we got a nice processor from Intel coming out, and I'm really happy to see that. So... Without further ado, thank you very much for watching. And speaking of building computers and gaming PCs and recording PCs, um, I'm building this PC. Uh, this video actually should either be out or should be coming out soon. Um, this is a $900 uh, Ryzen kind of recording gaming PC. Obviously, you're watching the video more of Intel, but obviously Ryzen does have a great um, option for when you're doing streaming and workstation tasks. So this is a recording gaming PC. It comes in right around $900. It'd be 16 gigabytes of RAM, um, 1060, 6 gigabyte. Oh, it's a pretty strong PC for what it's going to be doing. So of course, you want to see that build will be coming out soon. So make sure you tune in for that. It'll also be a live stream. I'll have it on the top of my channel. So if it's still going to happen, it'll be on the top of your channel. So you can make sure you tune in for that as well. I hope you see you there. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Check out my channel for other cool tech related things, videos, news, leaks, discussion, uh, builds, unboxings, reviews, all that stuff. So thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.